शिव शक्तुक्त शक्त प्रभावित न चे देव देव न खलु कुशल स्पंदी अतस्वाध्यंग हरिहर विरिचादिर प्रणंतुम स्तोतुम वाकतमकृतपुण्या प्रभवती अविद्यामिहिद्वीपनगरी जडान चैतन्य स्तबकमकंदुतिझरी दरिद्राण चिंतामणि गुणनिका जन्म जलधाओ निमग्ना दंस्त्र मुरिपुवराहस्य भवती Thou art the island city of the suns, illumining the internal darkness of the ignorant. Thou art the stream, ever flowing with the honey of the bouquet of consciousness for the dull-witted. Thou art like a rosary of chintamani's, bestowing the heart's desire of the destitute. And in the case of those submerged in the ocean of birth and death, Thou art the tusk of the boar avatara of Mura Ripu. Namaste. So this is a wonderful verse, the third verse of the Saundarya Lahari. And it begins with the word avidya, avidyana, huh? those who are subject to ignorance. Avidya means ignorance, not knowing, not having knowledge, bereft of correct information. So she takes away that uh, ignorance, you know, to, to give knowledge or to have all-embracing knowledge, to have self-realization is called jnana. And that's not exactly knowledge in the way that knowledge is used in English. Knowledge usually means words and symbols. But to get jnana is not a process of collecting knowledge. It is a process of eliminating ignorance, avidya. So she takes away this ignorance and the real knowledge, the real experience shines like the sun. Uh, like, what does she say here? The island city of the suns. Just a beautiful effulgence, more than millions of suns. It has to be experienced <laughs> to be understood. But the the goddess, the Shakti, the Devi, uh, she is knowledge or she is jnana because she is consciousness. She's the chit shakti or chitta shakti. Chittam means consciousness. So she is the power of consciousness. Try to understand. Yes, she is a real person and her form is also real. But her function, her energy, is pure consciousness. So when this consciousness is occluded, uh, covered by ignorance, it, it can't reveal the truth. But when that ignorance is simply removed, then truth is obvious. Like I was saying in the last video, the process of self-realization is simply the removal of all the false stories that we tell ourselves and others. And when those stories are removed, then the truth is obvious because we're conscious, we're aware. We have Chit Shakti. She is with us at all times. So in that way, the truth is revealed. 
And next, you see, is like a stream ever flowing with the honey of the bouquet of consciousness. The bouquet of consciousness means the different states of consciousness. Uh, jagat, Svapna, Sushupti, uh, and the fourth. So beyond the fourth, even there's another state. And these states actually are all full of nectar. They're all full of sweetness and honey. Huh? Don't we love to see something beautiful like a sunset or even just the sky? Huh? There are so many beautiful things in the world. Of course, human beings create so much ugliness that sometimes we can't see past the ugliness to the beauties of nature, but they're there, underlying everything. So the real value of life, the real value of experience is consciousness, nothing else. Yes, there are so many nice things we can be conscious of, but that doesn't mean we have to call them possessions huh? and say they're mine. You can't own the sky. You can't own the earth or the sun. Nobody can compass them. Nobody can possess them. But these are the sources of beauty. Without the sun, without light, all life collapses. So try to understand. This is Devi. This is the goddess. This is Shakti. Who's Shakti? Shiva. And Shiva is Turiya Tita, beyond even Turiya. Because in Turiya, there are still objects, there's still some duality, but in Turiya Tita is no object. And that is Shiva's native state. Also, our native state. So try to understand, this prayer evokes or invokes Shakti as the giver of all knowledge. And what else? Thou art like a rosary of Chintamani's. Now the Chintamani stone is held by Indra, the king of the demigods. And the specific power of the Chintamani stone is it gives whatever is desired. So she is like a rosary, uh, a mala, 108 chintamanis. And you can keep her in your hands and chant her by reciting these verses of the Saundarya Lahari. Just try to understand how wonderful this prayer is. It really gives the results and the powers that are advertised in the uh, commentaries. Huh? You can download the commentaries from the links in the video description. I haven't held back any secrets. It's all there, all the sources where I'm getting this information. So take a look for yourself. Try it for yourself. Chant these shlokas. I'm releasing a companion video to this video with the third shloka repeated, uh, repeated 26 times, actually. So if you chant, chant along, learn the verse, chant along with it, you will also get this knowledge. I mean, actually, you already have it, but you can't see it because your intelligence is covered by all the nonsense. Uh, so finally, uh, for those submerged in the ocean of birth and death, she is the tusk of the Boar Incarnation. The Boar Incarnation, Varaha. Varaha Dev is an incarnation of, of uh, Vishnu, who defeated Hiranyaksha, the great demon, the brother of Hiranyakashipu, and rescued the earth from the bottom of the Garbodaka Ocean. 
long time ago, in the very beginning of the universe. And how he did it? With his tusks. That's why he assumed the form of a boar. A boar likes to root around and dig around in the mud huh? and find nice things to eat. <laughs> For boars, I guess. But uh, the boar incarnation lifted the very earth herself out of the muck. And that tusk is Shakti. See, she is the power that gets things done. The different incarnations are like symbols of that power, but they don't really do the work. Huh? They just get the credit. <laughs> the men like to sit around and take all the credit while the women do all the work in the back room. Am I right? <laughs> so what this means is that she can dig you out of the muck too. She can rescue you from having fallen into the muck. Huh? And she has many different forms, many different shaktis. The chit shakti, which is consciousness. The icha shakti, which is desire. Huh? It's so many different forms. There's hundreds of them. <laughs> All the wives or consorts of the different incarnations and demigods are also her. Or expansions of her. So for example, Sita Ram. Sita is also Shakti. Radha Krishna. Radha is also Shakti. See? Or in any of the incarnations. So try to understand. The worship of any of these is equivalent to the worship of Shakti. But usually it is performed without full knowledge by people involved in sectarian religion, Dvaitavada, at the very lowest level of true religion. But as we rise up in the higher levels, huh? Vishishta Dvaita or Dvaita Dvaita or Bheda Bheda <laughs> is the next one. And then beyond that, to the direct perception of a Dvaita, we get higher and higher, broader and broader glimpses of the grand perspective of things. Because all these manifestations are Shakti. They're all her. And the highest form of Shakti is Ambal. Ambal is the universal mother who is the incarnation of love. So by worshiping her, see, this removes this mud from our eyes. It removes this, this narrow sectarian view. It removes all hate and misunderstanding. You see, and this is why she should be worshiped in any form. Even in the Christian world, there is the, the mother. Huh? Madre de Dios, <laughs> the mother of God, Mary. And guess what? Just down the street from where I used to live, they're building a new temple to the goddess. And she is called Mari, uh, Mariama. Very common form of the goddess worship in South America, uh, South India, sorry. <laughs> But also South America, because in Christianity, Mari, Mary, is seen as the mother of Jesus. So these uh, really, we look at them with disdain as if they're simpletons, huh? but they really are onto something. When they worship the mother, it's just the same as worshiping Shakti. But of course, they don't see that because they're in the sectarian view, Dvaitavada. But when you get beyond the sectarian view, you can see this mother principle in all religions. With the possible exception of Islam, it's very much covered over in Islam, unfortunately. But they also, in a secret way, worship the mother, the mother of the prophet the mother of Muhammad, who inspired him 
and who supported him to write the Quran. So see, the mother principle is there in all religions. You can't avoid her. Huh? Even Patanjali, uh, the yoga guy. <laughs> I mean, most yogis today are atheistic. But Patanjali himself writes in the Yoga Sutras that the aim of yoga is to realize the Chit Shakti. Chit Shakti means consciousness, which is exactly the same thing that we're talking about. Uh, that when you realize consciousness, when you realize that the world is a phenomenon arising in consciousness, instead of the other way around, not that consciousness arises in the world as a phenomenon. No. <laughs> the world arises as a phenomenon in consciousness. And the proof of that is every night when you go to sleep, the world disappears. And you're plunged into the world of dreams. And then that disappears. And only consciousness is left. So this is the Turiya. Uh, this uh, view of seeing all these different phenomena as simply arising in consciousness. This is the Turiya view. And then beyond Turiya, Turatita, where you're just pure awareness with it, without any object. This is the state of Shivam. And this is the origin of all the rest of the creation and the different phenomena that arise. So, to take full advantage of this, download our companion video on verse 3 and just watch it. Huh? Or if you really want to get into it, learn the verse and recite it along with the video. That's really the best way. And also make the offerings that are associated with it. And if you do that for a few days, you will immediately see the result. You will experience the result of this power, this Shakti, this divine force. Om Tat Sat. Aung Harihi Aung.